Is it time to kill off factory farming before it kills us off? You know, over the holiday season, uh, my mother-in-law was visiting, and Louise's mom, and she and Louise were reminiscing uh, about uh, Uncle Jim, a friend of the family, or uh, her, my Louise's dad's best friend back back in the day. This was back when you know, 50 years ago, when Louise was a little little teeny tiny kid. And how every morning for breakfast, he would take a raw egg and crack it into a, a mug of beer and stir it up, and that's what he'd have for breakfast. Yeah, it doesn't sound real appetizing. But the fact of the matter is that I remember, you know, in the, in, in the 60s, uh, you know, Paul Bragg and these other guys who were into uh, health saying, you know, crack a raw egg into your smoothie and, and, and uh, eating cookie dough, raw cookie dough, because it was safe. Well, now it's not safe anymore. Now, in fact, salmonella, which is the, the, the most common form, it kills more Americans every year than any other foodborne illness. Uh, 100,000 Americans a year are sickened by salmonella cont- containing eggs. And, uh, in fact, in 2000, the latest statistics, 2008, 182,000 Americans were sickened by salmonella. Medical researchers at the University of Minnesota took more than 1,000 food samples from retail markets across that state. They found evidence of fecal contamination, that's poop, in 69% of the pork and beef and 92% of the poultry. Um, nine out of ten of the chicken carcasses were contaminated with uh, f- uh, fecal matter, and 50% of those were with a form of E. coli, which which is a normal intestinal bacteria that has mutated to actually cause urinary tract infections and and very dangerous ones that are that women are particularly vulnerable to. And uh, Campylobacter, another one, it can cause arthritis, blood infections, and can kill you. Fifty-nine percent of conventional factory farmed chickens were contaminated with Campylobacter. Um, And on it goes. Uh, We've gone a long way from the old, you know, family farm where there was, you know, it was it was messy and dirty, and so and and so you had competing bacteria, and you didn't have single strains that exploded to these factory farms where you have these relatively singular environments and animals that are routinely fed antibiotics, fully a third, 20 million pounds of antibiotics manufactured in the United States every year are routinely fed to animals just to make them grow faster. Greg Conco of the Competitive Enterprise Institute is uh, the author of uh, a piece over at CEI.org, their website, uh, saying the organic industry poo-pooed the suggestion that contamination arose on an organic farm. And well, but, well Greg, I don't want to characterize you. Uh, welcome to the show. Uh, thanks for having me on. Chuck. L- let me let you s- say your own <laughs> shtick. Well, you're you're what well, you're. Essentially saying that the, the factory farming is just fine with you. I don't understand. Well, I think that there uh, are some particular practices associated with factory farming where you and I probably would see eye to eye. Uh, things like um, uh, egg crates for uh, for egg laying hens that that, uh, that might be inhumane and that uh, we'd like probably to see uh, less of, uh, if not get rid of them altogether. But the fact of the matter is. Large consolidated farming operations are using resources, especially land and other imports, excuse me, inputs, a lot more efficiently and uh, able to grow a, a tremendous amount of food on much, uh, much less land. And that, that's a particularly good thing, uh, both for consumers and for the environment. Well, we might, in, we might be producing more food, but is it of a higher quality? Is it less dangerous? I mean, the U.S. meat industry produces 61 million tons of waste every year. It doesn't have to be disposed of like human waste. This is 130 times the volume of human waste produced in the United States. North Carolina, 700,000 factory-raised hogs create four times as much waste stored in reeking open cesspools as that state's 6.5 million people. I mean, this the, uh, just as a starting point. I mean, it, 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 fisteria, you know, this but this uh, microscopic organism that feeds off the phosphorus and nitrogen that is found in these these giant cesspools of waste, which don't exist 
on organic farms or on small family farms that are unique to factory farms. This fisteria has killed over a billion fish. Just in 1991, it killed a billion fish in the News River in North Carolina. That was kind of the wake-up. Um, more recently, it killed as many as 10 million in the in the Chesapeake Bay. I mean, we're these factory farms are altering our major ecosystems. They're contaminating our groundwater. Tom, you you can't honestly believe that uh, organic and uh, 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 sustainable farms uh, uh, animals don't produce waste. Can you? I, I mean, no, I'm not, just, going, I'm not disputing if, that. If what going, I'm saying is that that waste gets recycled. Have, if it, you're going to have, uh, it's the same thing with. Uh, it, it, take the example of the large uh, hog farming operations that you talked about. Yes, uh, they produce a terrible stench. These large waste lagoons. But they're stored in these, the, the, the waste is stored in these lagoons until the uh, uh, harsh ammonia burns off, and then the waste is actually used as manure. Burns right. off is so, a euphemism for is evaporated into the air and goes downwind and nukes all the neighbors? Uh, and, yeah, and, and I think that you and I might agree that there are things, uh, the additional things that we can do to, to try to address that problem. But the mere fact that you've got uh, uh, these animals producing a large amount of waste is going to happen whether you're producing them all together on very large farms or separately on smaller farms. No, you're not, because on smaller farms, the, these, these waste materials don't aggregate in these massive amounts that they leak out into the environment. They instead get recycled. In Virginia, well, for example... They get recycled on large factory farms in any event. Right, the, but they get the, recycled in ways that are... That, that are, that are not, that it's not like composting. It's it's not like you're using. I mean, you just take it out and spray it on the on the on the on the land where, in in many cases, where it just continues the cycle of contamination. This is how you end up with vegetables that are contaminated with fecal bacteria, with poop bacteria. Uh, well, as it turns out, a large uh, uh, industrialized crop growing operations generally don't use manure on their crops, and it turns out that 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 the big industrial conventional farms uh, are less likely to give you uh, 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 microbial foodborne illness than, uh, than are smaller farms that use animal waste to fertilize their field. And, and, and uh, even the union of, uh, excuse me, the, the Consumers Union, uh, through its publication Consumers Reports, has confirmed that you see a lot greater incidence of things like uh, Staph aureus and uh, Campylobacter and Salmonella in free-range chickens than you do in factory farm chickens. Why? Well, because free-range chickens get to go outside and they peck around in the dirt where they're exposed to a great deal of, of bacteria and other diseases. But these are not necessarily the highly pathogenic forms. The, 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 these super pathogens are the consequence, in many cases, of these animals being given massive amounts of antibiotics, and they develop antibiotic-resistant, they become breeding grounds for antibiotic-resistant antibiotic organisms. Uh, and, and again, I think here is an area where, you know, uh, certainly uh, top-line uh, antibiotics that are uh, important therapeutic uses in humans, I think you and I could probably agree that there ought to be some additional restrictions imposed on the use of these kinds of antibiotics. You know, in, in Virginia, in Greg, in but, Virginia, the state standard for for fecal coliform bacteria, for poop bacteria in the in the water, you know, in state water supplies in rivers and streams, is 200 colonies per 100 millimeters of water. Um, the last time they measured, it was 400. The average across the state was 424,000 per 100 milliliters. This is the consequence of factory farming in Virginia. Well, it's the consequence of growing a lot more animals in Virginia. Yeah. It, it, it's it's not per se. Factory farming. So let's it's, go back to small family more, farms. And, yeah, it, let's break up these big corporate if you're ag grow operations. Grow the same total amount of animals on smaller farms. You're still going to get the same total amount of waste. But you, but you know, nationwide, yes, but not concentrated in areas, you know, like Virginia and, and South Carolina. Okay, uh, we, people can read all about it over Competitive Enterprise Institute, CEI.org, the Competitive Enterprise Institute's website, Greg Conco. Greg, thanks for coming on and discussing this with us. Thank you, Tom. Good talking with you. Fifteen minutes past the hour.